Today is uh, a whole day's campaigning calling for the release of Shaka Rama, who is the last uh, London resident in Guantanamo. Every other British resident has now been released and in fact compensated. So this is a renewed push to ensure that Shaka comes home as soon as possible. This is the location where the new American embassy will be built and so it obviously has a symbolic uh, value and um, it's an opportunity to remind the British government that if it claims to have a special relationship with the Americans, it should start using it and bring uh, Shaka home. It's much too long to wait and the President said that Guantanamo would shut in January 2010, President Obama ordered the, the closure of Guantanamo and yet it's still open and Chaka and others are still there. It's, it's much too late, time to come home. What is central to all of this is the community from Battersea. Battersea Mosque, the Islamic Culture and Education Centre. Tooting Mosque in, uh, in Tooting High Street. Gatton Road Mosque. These are all important community organisations. Um, Central also has been the Stop the War Coalition because this has been anchored in the anti-war movement, in the absolute necessity for Britain to withdraw its troops from Afghanistan. Just across the road behind you is where the American Embassy will be. Uh, as you can see, you're, you're, you are getting the view that they're going to get from their building. A lovely view straight through to the House of Commons. You can see one of the towers of the House of Commons. They're within waving distance of Westminster. Uh, but we're here to, tell, to give the United States a message, uh, or rather to ask them a question, which is, why is Shakarama still in Guantanamo? Without charge, without trial, without the right that every person in this country would have to prove their innocence in a court. Why is he still there nine years on, nearly two years after Obama came to power, and nearly a year since the time by which Obama guaranteed that Guantanamo would be closed? I think we know the answer. Um, you don't have to read WikiLeaks. You can only have to read Bush's own autobiography to know that there was constant uh, state-sanctioned torture at Guantanamo Bay and we all know that Shaka Arma must have been one of the victims. We know from Wazim Beg, one of the, uh, one of the British uh, residents of Guantanamo who was released and has now been paid a handsome sum in compensation by the United States, quite rightly too. We know from him that the big cheese among the prisoners in Guantanamo was recognized by all of them to be not Muazzam, but Shaka Arma. And there is no doubt in his mind, nor in my mind, that Shaka was, and maybe still is, the victim of torture. And that is an essential part of the reason why the Americans have been so slow and so reluctant to let him go. Sarah here reminded me the words of a, a philosopher, we don't remember who it is, uh, about torture in the United States. Only a few are guilty, but all are responsible. In other words, only a few people in Guantanamo are actually guilty of doing the torture, but all of us are responsible. We have a responsibility if we do not protest, if we do not march, if we do not campaign, then we condone what they are doing and we carry a part of that responsibility ourselves. So we are here to demonstrate the fact that British people, the, the neighbors of Shaka Arma and his family who are living here in Battersea, demand his release from Guantanamo and demand that he should either have the chance of justice or freedom but preferably freedom in this country so that he can uh, live the life that all of us are entitled to uh, uh, and, and have a just society and a just system. Um, so I, I thank you all for coming and I can promise you that many other people from Battersea will, sh will applaud what you're doing and will show solidarity with you. Thank you very much. Sisters and brothers, I 
first like to bring you the greetings of Billy Hayes, the General Secretary of the Communication Workers Union, who would have been here today but for another engagement. Congratulations to the campaign and to all of you who organised today's event. This, this is certainly should be seen as a turning point in what has been a long and difficult campaign. If you, if you have an unjust war, as the war in Afghanistan is, then you're going to use some pretty unjust methods to justify and to prosecute it. And we have to say that the existence of Guantanamo, the existence of the Bagram, shows exactly where unjust actions lead you. They lead you to torture, they lead you to extraordinary rendition, they lead you to denial of what is actually happening and is well known. But it's long overdue. We know it's overdue that Shaka comes home. It's overdue that Guantanamo actually closes. This year, in January, President Obama made an executive order that Guantanamo should be shut. And yet there are still people in Guantanamo, Shaka is still in Guantanamo, and still Guantanamo is open. What is the delay? Four years ago, David Miliband, when he was Foreign Secretary, argued for Shaka to come home. And still he hasn't come home. What is the delay? Is it because there are people in the American government, the American establishment, are worried about what Shaka knows about Bagram, what he will say about Guantanamo? But the, that's a pointless reason to retain someone in, uh, in such a manner because the truth will out. We will learn everything that happens eventually. In fact, in recent weeks, we've been learning quite a lot from the WikiLeaks. We understood that, uh, already, that people were being imprisoned unjustly, that torture was being used, but we didn't know quite how cynical some of the things were. When we learned that American diplomats regard Cameron and Osborne as lightweights, well, at least that shows the Americans are right on some things. And when they say that the British government values the special relationship much more than the American go government does, well, didn't we know that really? Didn't we know the fact that it's always been a sop and that the continued support of the British government for American foreign policy in Afghanistan and elsewhere, and there's continued support for um, uh, uh, the, um, what the American government is doing, is leading to no concessions to the British government. Otherwise, they would have freed Shaka four years ago. And we also have to ask of our, law, of our mayor, Boris Johnson, are you too busy writing expensive articles for magazines to write a single letter for your constituent, Shaka Arma, to ensure his early release. Now, this has been a long campaign, but do not get tired. This week, we've been inspired by the activity of young people campaigning against tuition fees. That's the future. We must not get tired. We must push this campaign through to its final end and ensure that Shaka returns soon. Thank you. First and foremost, we would really appreciate and understand that all those who have come here today, really it is clear indication that you are concerned about the great injustice that is happening in different parts of the world. And when we see so many non-Muslim friends, it even makes me wonder that how is it that here in today's time, when there is so much attack on the image of Islam and the Muslims, Yet there are people who are reading between the lines, people who understand, people who are intelligent. And that is the reason why we have one common ground. Shakir Amir, a father. Shakir Amir, a husband. Shakir Amir, a family man. Shakir Amir has not even been charged. And what we are come here in front of us in today's day and time, when people are speaking about bringing justice in the land, when the America is speaking to be the leader in championing the cause of justice, yet he is there for over eight years. The question we need to ask ourselves, that if a person, the like of a prophet, Joseph, Yusuf, peace be upon him, 
was in that prison for over for seven years, totally innocent. But God Almighty had tested him. So we understand for people who have faith that when a challenge and a difficulty comes upon an individual, we do give him a sense of comfort that God Almighty is indeed testing you. But it does not mean that when we know that there is a test that other people remain quiet or silent. Islam is a complete way of life. And part of our responsibility as people who are following a life, following the footsteps of the prophets before us, is to work and strive to achieve justice. And the Prophet Muhammad who came as the final messenger, he beautifully, clearly, comprehensively gave us a very clear message. Ittaqu da'wat al-mazloom. Very simple. All we have to do is be fearful of the supplication or the prayer of any person who is a who is oppressed, who is downtrodden. So if one individual has to turn and cry out, we do not know that if God Almighty has to answer his prayer, that what about all those people, maybe only not even in Battersea, those that knew him, those that knew his family, those who had abandoned his cause, if he only had to turn to a creator, then we do not know how conditions can change. We are in a very cold, freezing day. But there are people who do not even have the heating, people who are really in great suffering, people who are in the state of destitution and poverty. So indeed, the Prophet Muhammad said, there is no screen between an oppressed person and God Almighty. Let's understand our roots and our commonality. When we came into this world, the poet beautifully says, You came in the world and you were crying. And all the people, all the family, all were rejoicing. Every person, when he aimed, was ushered into this world, he came crying and the family were all rejoicing. But when we are in this world, we are on a journey. Eight years have passed very fast. Life is passing very fast. And this journey, is, a day is going to come. It definitely is going to come to an end. So while we are here, the God, as believers or people who understand that this land here in Battersea, will bear testimony on the day of judgment. Amilta, meaning you had done that action on such and such a day. On such and such a day, you had done this action. Why? Solely because you were concerned about an individual. And we do not know that this can be a great means of salvation in the life hereafter. Furthermore, that poet completes by saying that you do this action while you are in this world, so that when the day finally arrives, when the day comes that you would have to depart from this temporary abode, you would leave this world rejoicing. You will get the happiness and the glad tidings, but the people around you will be crying. So we just encourage you to continue striving, never despair, and a day, and never, and, and, and finally, uh, as the uh, verse of the Quran beautifully, God Almighty says that God would not change the condition of a people until this change from within themselves. And this change will only come if we truly continue, unite, and remain steadfast and work and strive to achieve and bring peace and justice in the land and also never despair when it comes to try to secure the release of the innocent prisoners. Thank you. There's a book of poems written by Guantanamo detainees. I recommend you buy it if you get the opportunity when you uh, come to uh, Battersea Art Centre. This was written by Shaka. It's called They Fight for Peace. Peace, they say. Peace of mind. Peace on earth. Peace of what kind? I see them talking, arguing, fighting. What kind of peace are they looking for? Why do they kill? What are they planning? Is it just talk? Why do they argue? Is it so simple to kill? Is this their plan? Yes, of course. They talk, they argue, they kill. They fight for peace. And this is a message from Jeremy Corbyn, who was to attend today, but he has a family a matter that he has to deal with. I apologise that I had to attend a family matter and cannot be with you today. I congratulate the campaign for Shaka Armour for, for uniting such a broad public protest from local and national groups.
from faith groups and none, from all sectors, from all political groups, trade unions, from Muslims and non-Muslims, with one message, bring home Shaka armor. Nine years in US custody is an absolute outrage. He faces no charges or trial, and only public protests will shame the governments, both UK and US, to action. We want an early date for his return to Battersea. We know that in January 2002, Tony Blair and Jack Straw colluded with the US, agreeing that British citizens and residents abducted and sold to the US and tortured could be rendered to Guantanamo as the best way to meet our objectives. How, how, what a travesty. Shaka Armour is still a victim of that discredited and disgraced war on terror policy of Bush and Blair. He is still being tortured. Now is not the time to talk about charges and fair trial, not after so long in suffering. A charge now would be a travesty. Shaka Armour must be released. Now, listen to us, US Ambassador. Ambassador, listen to us. Shaka Armour must come home now. Okay, now to our final speaker, Chris Nynham, who, as I said, is a national officer of Stop the War Coalition. And welcome to Chris. First of all, I'd like to congratulate uh, everyone who's been involved in organising and participating in this very impressive and dogged uh, local campaign uh, for the release of Shakarama. And I'd like to bring uh, the solidarity and support of the National Stop the War Coalition to you all. Uh, we will be marching immediately after I, I speak, and I've been asked to say, could everyone on the demonstration make sure that they take a placard so that everyone who's passing by can see exactly why we're protesting and what the cause is. And I think this is a moment for calling things by their real names. Bagram and Guantanamo are torture camps and Shaka Armour has been tortured by the US and with the full complicity of the British government. We said, all of us, after 9-11, that if that incident was uh, responded to by the unleashing of war, we would be brought to a spiral of destruction, degra degradation and barbarity that would impact around the world. And that is indeed what has happened. And Shaka Armour is just one of the hundreds and thousands or millions of people who suffered because of that decision by the Western powers. The hypocrisy of the Western powers and our government remains almost unbelievable. Today we're being told that the WikiLeaks revelations of the crimes, the lies and the failures of Western foreign policy is risking lives. WikiLeaks is not risking lies. WikiLeaks has exposed the fact that the war on terror has led directly to the deaths of hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of people around the world. And we must be absolutely clear about that. And we have, in fact, a couple of opportunities in the next weeks and months to continue the campaign against the war on terror. One is that on Tuesday there's going to be a protest against what's happening to Julian Assange at one o'clock in central London. The other is that due to the pressure of all of us and many, many more thousands around the country, Tony Blair is being brought back to the Chilcot Inquiry in the new year. We don't know the date yet, it's sometime in January or February, but we must make sure there is once again a massive show of opposition and protest, not just at the uh, illegality and the criminal criminality of their policy, but the hypocrisy of what the government has been doing and the way that the government has had to be, has linked itself to the foreign policy of the US. One of the most distressing and disgusting things 
that has spun off from the war on terror is the way that it has impacted on Muslim communities in Britain and around the world. And Shakarama is also, I believe, a victim of that. In order to justify bombing Muslim countries, our government has criminalised, our government has victimised, our government has attacked Muslims in many, many ways around this, in this country. And the Stop the War Coalition stands shoulder to shoulder with every Muslim brother and sister under attack in this country. And we will do everything we can. We will continue to fight inch by inch for the final release of Shaka Arma from Guantanamo Bay. But I want to end by saying one last thing. That there won't be freedom, there won't be justice, there won't be peace for people in this country or around the world until every last Western soldier is brought back from Afghanistan and the US stops meddling in the Middle East. We must break our links with Washington. Thanks very much, and let's march now. <laughs>
Right, my name is David, David Harold. Well, I'm here because I'm part of the Save Shaka Armour campaign. And uh, it's been really interesting meeting lots of different people from actually different parts of the country who are here. The campaign was started by a few people in Battersea, in Shaka's home area, who uh, felt that there was a massive injustice, which of course there is, uh, being committed that very few people seem to know about. Um, this man's been in prison for nine years, he's been charged with nothing. His British wife and four children are living here in Battersea and so a local campaign got started and is growing as we, um, as we can see here. Yeah, I've done a few other marches for um, other causes ever since this so-called war on terror started. There seems to have been cause to come out on the streets and protest about something related to it, which of course this is a very good example. We were told that Guantanamo was going to close. Um, it hasn't closed and it looks as if nothing will change on that front unless there's protest from below. The initiative isn't coming from the politicians. Well, I think other groups are going to get involved. Amnesty International is already um, building up a big campaign. Um, other political groupings are uh, joining with us today. The Stop the War Coalition is here, <coughs> CND are here, and um, we've got a lot of interested people, as I say, from across the country. I think that different campaigns have different effects. I've been on one campaign that was very effective but very small because what I intended to do was to activate the local MP and it did that and uh, it helped. Um, here I think we've got uh, bigger ambitions. Um, we're part of a national movement to uh, try and raise awareness about Chaka Armour and the fact that Guantanamo hasn't been closed and that there are secret prisons in other parts of the world like Bagram where terrible human rights abuses are being committed, where torture is going on and so on. In our name, in fact, you know, the idea is that we're being defended by these um, illegal measures. So I think that lots of small campaigns can, like, as it were, um, you know, by networking, can actually build into something quite large. Close down! Close down! Close down! Close down! What's happening? Today! Now! Free, free, Shaka Oma! Free, free, Shaka Oma! Bring home! Bring home! Bring home! Close! Bring home! Bring home! Bring home! USA, USA, bring him home today. 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 Free, free. Free, 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 free